I'm Congressman Ron Paul, a congressman from Texas. I've been in a Congress for 20 years. My goal has always been to promote the cause of liberty and to obey the Constitution. I plan to do that as president as well. Congressman Paul, let me uh, expand this conversation. Do you agree with Governor Perry that Social Security is a Ponzi scheme? Well, I agree that Social Security is broke. And we spent all the money, and it's on its last legs unless we do something. One bill that I had in Congress that never got passed was to prevent the Congress from spending any of that money on the wars and all the nonsense that we do around the world. Now, the other, uh, the other thing that I would like to see done is a transition. I, uh, I, I think it's terrible that the, uh, that the Social Security system is in the, in the problems. It has the problems it has. But if uh, people wouldn't have spent the money, we would be okay. Now, what I would like to do is to allow all the young people to get out of Social Security and go on their own. Now, the big, the big question is, is how would the funding occur? All right, hold that thought for a minute, because I want Herman Cain. Paul, what about you? Would you repeal it? Well, we shouldn't have never started it. I voted against it, but that sure wouldn't be on my high list. I would find a lot of cuts a lot of other places. Matter of fact, on Social Security, it is already being reformed because the cost of living increases aren't there, so the value is going down. So, no, there's places we should cut, and we cut, we spend, and I'm, I'm not sure I can get anybody to agree with me on here, on this panel, but we spend $1.5 trillion overseas in wars that we don't need to be in, and we need to cut there and then put this money back into our economy here. And uh, that is the only way to achieve it. Then it still wouldn't be enough in order to get some people out. What we need to do is cut the Department of Education, the Department of Energy, and all these partners and get rid of them. Then we can do it. We're going to get to national security. Don't worry. Uh, Congress, we're here in Tampa. Let's go right to a question from the audience. Please name your, uh, give us your name. Good evening. I'm Steve Broudsong with the Tea Party of Greater Gaston County from Gastonia, North Carolina. My question tonight is, what is your position on the Federal Reserve? Should it indeed be audited and be held accountable by the American people? Senator Santorum. Congressman Paul, you're from Texas. Uh, does your governor deserve all that credit? Not quite. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a taxpayer there. My taxes have gone up. Our taxes have uh, doubled since he's been in office. Our debt, our spending has gone up double. Our debt has gone up nearly triple. So, no, and 170,000 of the jobs were government jobs. So I would put a la little damper on this, but I don't want to offend the governor because he might raise my taxes or something. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I would like to uh, mention something that was said earlier about a tax cut and can you, uh, how do you pay for a tax cut. I think that's the wrong principle because when you give people their money back, it's their money. You don't have to pay for it. That means the government owns all of our money if you look that way. All right. So we, we have to uh, cut the spending and a good way to start, there's a uh, little embassy we built over in Baghdad. It cost us a billion dollars. It's big than the Vatican. That's what's bankrupting this country, and that's the easy place to cut. That's where we should be cutting. Governor Perry. Uh, uh, Congressman Paul. The uh, executive orders have been grossly abused by all administrations for a lot of years. But you can't but some, of, some executive orders are legal. When the president executes proper function of the presidency, like moving troops and other things, yes, it's done with an executive order. But the executive order should never be used to legislate. That is what is so bad. So uh, the executive order should be taken under control. And I has, I've made a promise if as president, I would never use the executive order to legislate. Governor Perry, uh, as, as you well know, Governor, uh, I, I, before I get to Michelle Bachman, I want to just, you're a physician, Ron Paul, so you're a doctor, you know something about this subject. Let me ask you this hypothetical question. A healthy 30-year-old young man has a good job, makes a good living, but decides, you know what, I'm not going to spend $200 or $300 a month to, for health insurance because I'm healthy, I don't need it. 
but you know something terrible happens uh, he, all of a sudden he needs it who's gonna pay for if he goes into a coma well, for example in, in a who, society, who pays for that in a society that you accept welfareism and socialism he expects the government to take care well, what of what do him. you want but what he should do is whatever he wants to do and assume responsibility for himself. My advice to him would have a major medical policy, but not before. But he doesn't have that. He doesn't have it, and, he's, and he, needs, he needs intensive care for six months. Who pays? That's what freedom is all about, taking your own risk. This whole idea that you have to prepare and take care of everybody. But, Congressman, are you saying that society should just let him die? No. Yeah. I practiced medicine um, before we had Medicaid in the early 1960s when I got out of medical school. I practiced at Santa Rosa Hospital in San Antonio, and the churches took care of them. We never turned anybody away from the hospital, and we've given up on this whole concept that we might take care of ourselves, it was true responsibility for ourselves, our neighbors, our friends, our churches would do it. This whole idea, that's the reason the cost is so high. The cost is so high, we cause a dump on the government, becomes a bureaucracy, it becomes special interest, it kowtows to the insurance companies and the drug companies, and then on top of that you have the inflation. The inflation devalues the dollar. We have lack of competition. There's no competition in medicine. Everybody's protected by, by licensing. We should actually legalize alternative health care, allow people to have, practice what they want. Congressman Bachman, go ahead and, and weigh in on this. Congressman Paul. First thing I would like to do is make sure that you understand there's a difference between military spending and defense spending. I'm tired of all the militarism that we are involved in and we're wasting this money and getting us involved. And I agree, we are still in danger, but most of the danger comes by our lack of wisdom on how we run our foreign policy. So I would say there's a lot of room to cut on the military, but not on the defense. You can slash the military spending. We don't need to be building airplanes that were used in World War II. We're always fighting the last war. But we're under great threat because we occupy so many countries. We're in 130 countries. We have 900 bases around the world. We're going broke. The purpose of Al-Qaeda was to attack us, invite us over there where they can target us. And they have been doing it. They have more attacks against us and the American interests per month than occurred in all the years before 9-11. But we're there occupying their land. And if we think that we can do that and not have retaliation, we're kidding ourselves. We have to be honest with ourselves. What would we do if another country, say China, did to us what we do to all those countries over there? So I would say a policy, a national, a foreign policy that takes care of our national defense, that it, we're willing to get along with people and trade with people as the founders advised. There's no authority in the Constitution to be the policeman of the world and no nation building. Just remember, George Bush won the presidency on that platform in the year 2000. And I still think it's a good platform. All right, let me let Senator Santorum respond because I know you strongly disagree. On your, on your website on 9-11, you had a blog post that, said, that basically blamed the United States for 9-11. On your website yesterday, you said that it was our actions that brought about the actions of 9-11. Now, Congressman Paul, that is irresponsible. A president of the United States running for, someone who's running for the president of the United States and the Republican Party should not be parroting what Osama bin Laden said on 9-11. We should have, we, we, are, we, are not being, we are not being attacked, and we were not attacked because of our actions. We were attacked, as Newt talked about, because we have, a, we have a, a civilization that is antithetical to the civilization of the jihadist. And they want to kill us because of who we are and what we stand for. And we stand for American exceptionalism. We stand for freedom and opportunity for everybody around the world. And I am not ashamed to do that. 30 seconds, uh, Mr. Paul. As long as this country follows that idea, we're going to be under a lot of, a lot of danger. This whole idea that the whole Muslim world is responsible for this and they're attacking us because we're free and prosperous, that is just not true. Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda have been explicit. They have been explicit and they wrote and said that we attacked we attacked America because you had bases on our holy land in Saudi Arabia. You do not give Palestinians a fair treatment and you have been bombing 
I didn't say that. I'm, I'm trying to get you to understand what the motive was behind the bombing. At the same time, we had been bombing and killing hundreds of thousands of Iraqis for 10 years. Would you be annoyed? If you're not annoyed, you, then there's some problem. All right, we're going to stay on this subject. We have a question from the audience. Go ahead. together. Congressman Paul. I'd bring a bushel basket full of common sense and I would also bring a course in Austrian economics to teach the people the business cycle and why the Fed creates inflation and depressions and all our unemployment problems. Governor Perry. It's simple.